Hi guys, I wanted to share another quick tip today on how to create multi-body 3D prints for FDM multicolor or multi-material printing. This is going to be great for those new users who are jumping on the bamboo wagon where they have built-in multi-material and multi-color printing modes in FDM. In order to get those, you need to have a multi-body surface part. Um, so creating that assembly uh, for some complex designs can be quite challenging. And so today I wanted to show you uh, something that one of my graduates submitted as a question and wanted to share. So big shout out to Preston Boone at uh, Jason Lim in Houston, Texas, who came up with this really crazy design. Uh, let me show you on my screen, uh, to show you what he was able to work on. So he, on his own, figured out how to make this using uh, two-part printing. And really impressive, but he sort of emailed me and said, hey, you know, this wasn't quite perfect. How do I, how would you do this? And so he sent this over as well as an image he made from the uh, ZBrush training on how to create these kinds of alphas. So good for you for figuring that out and getting this far. Let's dive into the uh, ZBrush workflow for how to do this. So I uh, recreated his part here uh, from a CAD file using one of my templates. So again, that only took me a few minutes to go in and take his original scan. And, you know, I could have done the demo with this scan. But uh, it, it, was just, it was just really quick and easy for me to go in and quickly make a hard edge, good copy, you know, just drag and drop some of these uh, lines together to make that part and bring it over into ZBrush. Not that you need that for this by any stretch. So, but I like working from a CAD file. So we're going to start off, let's load up his uh, texture that he made for this one too. And uh, let's now look at uh, applying it as a multi-body part. So this is going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to start off by making sure my head's in the right spot. We're going to first step, uh, go through the designer uh, workflows here. We're going to group by normals. We're going to get those hard edges. And if we don't get those hard edges, we can angle for the group by normals. There we go. Get that uh, grouping set up. Then we can do our Dynamesh, get ourselves a high resolution. So I'm at 1.5 million. That looks great. I'm going to turn off my lines so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, step one is complete. We have our groups. Step two is uh, we're going to now duplicate this part and we're going to work on the duplicate. We're going to have the original in the background for when we need it. Um, so for this duplicate, let's control shift, select the outside surface or the outside group, right? So all we have now is a 2D surface visible and we're going to delete hidden. That's going to be our first step. Uh, the next step we can do uh, something that might help for these edges because uh, this resulting two part thing uh, we'll wrap around an edge sometimes and you'll get a messy result. So we can work around that by quickly going to our uh, mask by features area. And we're going to uh, mask by border. There we go. And we're going to start growing that mask. And then we're going to sharpen that mask. And then we're going to grow that mask. And then we're going to sharpen that mask. So what that did was it masked our edge of this one surface. And then we're just slowly growing that so that the affected area, the final affected area, is going to be just, just slightly off of that surface. So we don't, or that edge, sorry, so that we don't get um, some sort of wraparound distortion, which does happen sometimes. So we're going to group masked in this case. Here are the mask. We now have a second group on the inside. Uh, let's control shift, select that inside group and delete hidden again. Right? So now we have this offset surface ready to go. We're now ready to apply our mask that, um, that was made by Preston. So we're going to now go to our lattice workflows. We're going to hit that famous UVC button and mask by alpha. And right there, beautiful, 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 beautiful. No seams or anything, ready to go. So we're going to be able to take that now and let's uh, group by masked again. Control click to clear the mask. And now finally, let's control shift select the group we want to keep thing we want to cut and we're going to delete hidden once more right so we saw that reduction right we went from a 3d surface to a 2d surface and then an offset surface to the pattern deleting as we went so now we have a copy our, our second copy is just that 2d surface and we have the part underneath it which we're now going to cut from using these surfaces so there's two things we can do we could cut with this and make it porous or we can do a multi-body uh, creation. So I'm going to show you both methods here. Uh, they're essentially the same, I think with one or two dials uh, being reversed. So uh, first things we got to do here, um, this is really high density and kind of jagged. So can we polish by to bring that down a bit? We can. So that really does help 
uh, clean up the lines um, if we want to as well. We're at a density of 330,000 points. If I can at all reduce this, I want to. So uh, let's try using our quad meshing. Uh, let's Z remesh this at 5,000 points. Maybe actually, let's try to, you know, 9,000 points just because I know it's a l nine. I know it's a little complex for 5,000 faces. And if not, we'll just reduce it. So like right there, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That looks good to me. You know, 11,000 points. I can work with that much easier than 350,000 points. So now that we have this, there's a few ways we could do it. But the really interesting way to do it is using this Z modeler tool. So I've parked down here for the graduates to use. Uh, so bring that up. Z modeler is like you stack a bunch of commands together in order to do something very specific. So in this case, if you hover over a face an edge, you're going to get a different set of commands. If you hover over a face, you're going to get a different set of commands. If you hover over a point, you're going to get a different set of commands. So make sure you're hovering over a face. Hit spacebar. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask it to QMesh which is a 2D to 3D option. We're gonna Q-mesh all polygons, um, making sure normal attraction is on. When you do that and you hit, click and drag off of that face, you're gonna see, oh, bam, we just made ourselves a thickness, just like before. Um, but for this next one, we gotta also put it inside. So to do that, we all now have to hover over that face, hit spacebar, and we want to now do it just to this back facing polygroup. So flip the, uh, you know, the target as just the polygroup. So now when we click and drag this polygroup from the back, we're gonna get an extrusion inward, also traveling the length of normals. So now we have two bodies at the same time, like uh, the same as before, but this time it's actually intersecting the inside part. And so we now have impossible geometry. We need to have this cut from the other. So this is where things get really confusing. I don't understand this workflow. It's probably from some weird industry that I don't understand. <laughs> but uh, to cut apart from another part, we need to have set up our tree so that the thing we're cutting is at the top of our subtool tree. And the thing we're cutting with, anything we're cutting with, needs to be below it. That's step one. Step two is we need to assign what is cutting. So there's three options here. We have the ability to join, to cut, or to intersect. Kind of like in Fusion, but we're gonna select cut for this first command. And then finally, we're gonna hit this tiny little uh, tiny little arrow in here where it says start. So now we're gonna start a combined command, cutting below. We've set that up. That's all ready to go. Now we have to hit live boolean. Hitting live boolean will give you a preview of what this boolean will do. And you can definitely see it. Right now it's working. If you like what you see, hit make boolean mesh. And this is gonna compute and compute and compute, especially at this density. And then nothing will happen. Where did it go? Um, where it actually went was the result of this command makes a new subtool. I don't know why it does that, but there's this part we just made. It's in its own little subtool, even though we were over here working in here. So when you're done a boolean mesh, the best thing to do is to just insert it back into your project. So now, if we turn off live boolean, we still have the original, right? We still have uh, the first one, we still have the second one, but now we have this product, this output from that arrangement, right? So that would be part one, this would be part two, and all of a sudden, bam, you have a nested two-part, two-part, uh, two, two, two-color 3D print that you could export and decimate uh, using our export tab. The final thing you could also do with this workflow is you probably guessed it. Uh, we could do this one more time and create a new output, but this time we're gonna look at the part we're cutting with, turn on our poly groups, and uh, we're gonna do that one more time. Polygroup all Q mesh, but this time we're gonna go right through the part. And you can see a weird outlier there, right? So sometimes that happens. That's why I actually uh, extruded away from the edge of the part uh, for that, for this reason. Sometimes this happens. Um, so I'm going to go back a few steps. I'm going to go forward one step. Even then it's still there. Ew. Geometry, you got to look out for it. Um, can I shift, drag? Can I just smooth that out? No. Okay, well, let's hope that doesn't pose an issue. 
Try one more time. We'll uh, punch through the whole thing. All right. There we go. Uh, yeah, that went through, right? There we go. So now that we have something that goes all the way through the part for fun, let's do the same thing and hit live boolean. Um, live boolean, by the way, will not work or show itself if any of these modifiers have been turned on. So do not turn on this or this or this. I have to, I believe, recompute boolean and making sure that I start on the correct subtool. So one, two, and this one's just hidden. Um, and then this has to, of course, cut from the surface. Try that again. There it is. So you can use this technique to also make porous geometry as well. Again, making a Boolean mesh, watching it compute at the top, finding it in your uh, sub tools and inserting that as a new part to our existing project. So now there's that output. We can turn off live Boolean. We can look at that results solo again, turn on solo, turn on solo. Thank you. One, two, and three. So that is, the quick tip today in a nutshell on how to make porous multicolor or two part prints for uh, FDM and in this case MJF. So uh, let me know how you found this training and otherwise if you want to follow along and visit the academy, join the courses, get the custom menus and uh, become a digital designer. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'll talk to you guys next time.